we're going to draw a copepod. What is a copepod? A copepod is a microscopic ten-legged crustacean. Let's take a look at a crustacean you're familiar with, a lobster. The lobster, this is about life size or they're even larger. They can get to be about a foot or two feet long. This is a copepod seen from the side. Our drawing's not going to really look like this. But this drawing had to be enlarged a lot. A copepod is very tiny, about the size of a head of a pin. Really, really tiny. In fact, it's even smaller than the head of a pin oftentimes. You need a microscope to see it. You don't need a microscope to see a lobster, but you do need a microscope to see this one. So you have to understand that these the copepod's not really as big as a lobster, okay? But if we could enlarge a copepod and and see it under a magnifier and pretend that it's the same size as a lobster, then we can compare their body types. So let's zoom in and take a quick look here. Okay, so you'll notice a lobster has these segments, right? That's one of the things you first notice about them. And you notice all their legs. One, two, three, four, five. Now he would have legs on the other side, right? So he'd have two of these, two of these, two of these, two of these, two of these. That makes ten legs. Well, a copepod also has ten legs. There's on, you're seeing just this side. There's one, two, three, four, five. And then he'd have five on the other side. So there's something they have in common. They both have ten legs. They both have some little things that look like sort of legs up by their mouth to help them eat. And of course, the copepod has these segments right, that look like the lobster's tail. Although it doesn't have swimmerettes coming out. The lobster is more complicated because it's big and it needs eyes. And it's got long antennae, although our, our copepod is going to have an antennae right here. It's got an antennae. So, but this, but he's got, he's got more complicated parts up here and got very good eyes. The copepod is going to have an eye spot right here. He's going to just have one spot. It's not a real eye. It's just something that sees light and dark. So he's got one eye spot and the lobster has two real eyes. However, you can see that they kind of look a lot alike. And that's because they both belong to the group of animals called crustaceans. The crustaceans belong to the larger group called arthropods. So the copepod is one of the smallest members of the family crustacea. Let's take a look at a picture that was done a long time ago, over a hundred years. Now this is very colorful. They really aren't this colorful in real life, unfortunately. They're not quite this pretty. But this artist showed you, look, they did a little side view there. You can see his legs. Now, you rarely see the legs. I'm going to show you a picture that's more like this. This, when you look under a microscope, this is what you see. Now, these, this isn't really legs. This is kind of more like of a tail and tenny thing. So you don't see the legs. They stay tucked up under. So when you see them from the top, you don't see the legs. But I thought you'd like to see that. That's very beautiful. Nice, nice drawing done a long time ago. Um, here's another one. Not quite so colorful, but very nicely done. People a long time ago, 100, 200, 300 years ago, knew what these things looked like. They had microscopes back then and they studied these little creatures and made some very nice drawings. Okay, so let's look at a copepod under a microscope. If you could look under a microscope and see them, this is what you'd see. You don't see the legs, do you? However, if you look carefully on the, this one, zoom in here. Right here there are some 
little dark blobby things you can see and those I think are the legs showing through because they're fairly transparent they're clear you can see right through them and usually you can see their stomach you can see what they've been eating if they've got eggs here's the eggs out here but when the eggs are still developing inside you can see them so that's the neat thing about microscopic creatures most of them are clear and you can see right through and you can see all their insides that makes them easy to study but you don't see the legs sticking out do you and here's another one so you don't see the legs you can see this is kind of his stomach area all this in here there's a little eye spot and he's got two little feet thing coming off okay so that's what they look like under the microscope now I want to show you one more picture before we start drawing I want to show you a picture taken with a very special microscope some really expensive microscopes called electron microscopes can take a picture of the texture the outside they don't look clear this kind of microscope can only show you the outside of something it can't show you the inside so this copepod is still clear but this microscope can't see through so they turn the copepod over and here you can see all the little legs see how they keep them all tucked up in so that when you turn it over the legs kind of disappear like that so that's the texture that's what the outside shape looks like now unfortunately you can't see both at the same time you can use this microscope to see the shape and texture or you can use this microscope to see th through it this is the kind of microscope that you would use in a science class it's the kind that you might get an opportunity to use the electron microscope that takes these pictures is very expensive and usually only universities have them so the problem is you can only see one or the other you don't can't get a microscope that will show you both at the same time that's kind of unfortunate but in our drawing maybe we can kind of combine a little bit a little bit of each type of microscope so one last picture I want to show you there's a lot of different shapes of copepods they're all similar okay but if yours looks a little bit rounder or a little bit longer or a little bit more squishy or something you don't have to overly worry about it we're going to try to draw one that looks probably about like this one here and if yours is a little fatter then maybe it's this one okay but we're going to try to aim for something that looks like this but you don't need to overly worry about getting it just right because you can see there's a wide range in body shapes some copepods live in the ocean some live in ponds some even live in very wet damp forests and some live they're parasites they live by hanging on to other creatures such as fish and sharks and they'll hang on to it I don't know if any of these are parasites I don't know which ones these are these weren't labeled but this just shows you that there's a lot of different kinds okay so you don't need to be overly worried about getting it just right so we're going to begin by drawing the basic body shape and you'll notice on your page that you have a little circle right here and a little dot right here this little circle is going to be your eye spot and the dot is going to be the bottom of our first basic shape so what you need to do is draw an egg shape you know an egg is like an oval where one end is a little rounder and one end is a little tapers to be a little more narrow we're going to draw an egg shape a little bit above this circle just like maybe the width of your little finger or something a little tiny bit above it is going to be the top of our egg shape and the bottom of our edge shape is going to be down with that dot so what you need to do is draw very lightly this is a guideline you need to use your pencil to draw a very light guideline because these lines you know you might want to erase them these might not be perfect the first time so you want to keep them very light so just kind of sketch out just like this coming out here 
Like I said, you probably won't get it right the first time. That's okay. This is just a sketchy guideline. There's the bottom of my egg. See, I need to erase this, but if I drew lightly, it's easy to erase. Now I want to make another guideline down here. We're going to draw from here. We need to leave a little space at the bottom. We're going to bring the little kind of tail part. We want to make right about halfway between the dot and the bottom. Right about halfway is where we're going to stop with this little piece. It's going to taper. It's going to get a little more narrow as it goes down. Okay, so just a little wide line. That's going to be actually the sort of like the abdomen part. Okay, and then down here, this is where the it's going to be two things that stick out like this. I guess it's kind of like the tail. So there we have a basic shape except for the antennae. We're going to go back up here and we'll take a look again. Look at the antennae of these guys. This one, some copepods have antennae that kind of has this shape, like that. Some of them have antennae that go more, well, here's, here's a guy that has it really straight, oh, oh, his is really straight, and some of them have antennae that kind of go down, let's see if I find one that goes down, well this guy kind of goes down more, this is a side view, but he kind of goes more down, so some of them um, kind of curve more down to the side, so you can make yours, if you want to make one that's kind of just goes like this. You can do that, just kind of like that. Or you, if you want to make one that's more of a fancy shape like this, you can. Okay, so you can't go too far wrong here because there's a variety. I want to try to make mine like this. But yours doesn't have to look just like that. Now the challenge is going to be to try to make it again on this side. And if they're not perfectly the same, it's okay. Just try your best. Remember to draw lightly so that you can erase if you need to. Okay, now we're ready to put in some more detail. We're going to use our pencil to actually draw the final lines. We need to put some segments across here. You know, and you can kind of look down here at this little guy so I'd see how it's got little segments. Okay. And we're going to use the number five. Five and ten are kind of the numbers for crustaceans. Lobsters have ten legs, and this guy has ten legs. We're going to give him five segments. A lot of them have five segments here and five segments here. So we're going to kind of go with the theme of five and ten. So we're going to give him a total of ten, five here and five down below. So we want to kind of see where the dot is. Make this kind of, this is going to be oh, here, right above the dot. At the end of your egg, you're going to kind of make the end of the egg flat, like that. Okay. And then count up, we're going to go no more than, let's say, the last segment. We want to keep it below halfway. If you kind of estimate, try to see where halfway is between here and here, halfway in the body, and then just come down a little bit like that. This will be, make it kind of curvy, just a little slight curve upward, just like that, slight curve. 
So this will be segment one, and then we need two, three, four, five. So let's divide this in half, the bottom portion, divide it in half, and then divide this one in half, and divide that one in half. And then let's make five down here. Now it's not going to work out right if we divide it in half and in half again, that'll give us four. And if you make four, that's okay. But let's try to make them about, see, let's guess one, two, three, four, five. Okay, now we're going to go back and draw, just start over here, come down, and I want to show you, we'll zoom in a little bit, this is what we're going to do on the side of the segment. If you can see on these, they kind of go in a little bit right here, see they kind of, I don't know if this is the right picture, we go out and in. We're going to kind of try to do this type of edge, uh, let's see, on this drawing. Here on this one, you can see the artist did it really well. You see how this segment is kind of underneath this one? There's like a little doop, thing like that, and then down here, doop, like this. And it kind of looks like this segment, but this segment is tucked up in the top one, and this one is tucked into this one, and this one is tucked into that one. You see how that one looks like? This one here it looks like it's tucked into this one, and that one looks like it's tucked into this one. So we're going to try to do that. So we need to go in like this. This will be our top one. And then bring your pencil in a little bit with this one. And we'll see, we can erase that guideline. See, make it look like it's tucked in just a little bit. See that? Go over, come in, just like that. Just start start in a little bit, like that. And then the same here. Start, come in just a little bit. We're going to have some lines to erase, aren't we? Then we can just erase those little guidelines. See, it was a good thing we kept them light, right? Because they're easy to erase now. Okay, and let's do the same thing down here. Draw the segment and then tuck in a little bit. See, I'm not exactly following my guideline. But see, that's when you go to make your final lines, you have a choice. You don't have to go right on that guideline. It's just a guideline, and you can change your mind if, when you're doing your final work. If you want to, you can change your mind. So mine is going to end up being a little bit thinner. I don't know, I just thought that looked nice. I can erase my guidelines. But the guidelines definitely helped me, didn't they? I wouldn't want to have drawn that without them. But you can always change your mind. And then these guys down here. Whoops. Okay, now at the bottom here on these things, this is going to be fun. These things have some little bristles. Let's make five. Let's go with the number five again. So you watch, and then me do it, and then you do it. This is fun. You kind of flick your pencil. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so you can try it. And then I'll do this one. 
One, two, three, four, five. You don't overly worry about exactly, because if you draw it really slowly, it won't look so good. The trick is to do it fast. That's what makes it look kind of nice and crisp and fresh. It, look, it makes it look alive if you do those quick strokes. Okay, so let's go up and let's work on the antennae here and finish those up. So we have the basic guideline of shape. I'll finish my top here. So now I need to make them look a little bit thick. Now not too thick. Let's see, remember how about how thick? Something like that. Or like the picture of the real ones. Here's the actual microscopic picture. Okay, so they're they're thicker here and then they kind of taper out. So if you want to, you can even, if it's helpful, if you want to turn your paper, if it's easier to draw like this, sometimes you find it hard like drawing or like that, but I can do it. But if you need to tip your paper, you can. Okay, so I'm going to make, you have to decide whether this is going to be the top or the bottom. I think this is going to be my top line. So I'm going to go like that, and then underneath, like this, and then I'm going to get narrower and narrower like that and then over here this is my top line now if we want to you can put in an extra one this one doesn't have a second antennae we can't see it it may have it a lot of them have a little second antennae and you can see in this one, this guy has a little second one right here. If you'd like to put one in, I'm just going to make the shape kind of the same as this one like that. You can put in a second one. Now the main thing we need to do the antenna now is we need to make them have segments. We're not going to go and make all the segments look tucked in. If you looked at them up close, they probably would look tucked in, like how we made these. But we're going to just draw little segments like this. It's just important to know that they do come in segments. And then another important thing is that they have little bristles coming out at various places. And you can definitely see this if you see if you look up close in this picture. See these things coming out like this? Okay, so it's going to have little bristles coming out. Everywhere that at the end of a segment where you drew a line, you can make one or maybe every once in a while make one with two coming out from here and some maybe some are long, some are short, kind of make them random. But everywhere you have a line is where you want to have a little line coming out. Right where the lines are. See, and once again, you can use these kind of quick strokes. And then they look kind of natural and like that. Now we're going to add a little bit of shading to the body. Okay, so we're going to start with this one right here. We'll get to this in a minute, but this is going to be a little harder. These will be easier. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use our pencil to make some shading. So first we used it to lightly to make a guideline. Then we used our pencil to make final line. Now we're going to use it as a shading tool. It helps if you kind of tip it and use it on the side. So straight up and down you kind of tip it a little bit like that. Okay. So you watch here what I'm going to do and then you try. Okay so watch I'm going to start shading like this fairly darkly and then 
as I go on, see I'm going to the right, gradually I'm going to go lighter and lighter and lighter. You see how I'm getting lighter? And then, so it's almost not even, and then I can really cheat. I can even take my finger and I can go in and smear it around. Ah, oh, now look at how three-dimensional that is. It looks like it's curving, doesn't it? Let's try it on the next one. Okay, so you can try those. And I'm going to keep going down this way because remember they are they are round they are three-dimensional though though the microscopic image looks flat when you look at them under the microscope they look flat we know because of the electron microscope images we know actually that they're not flat that's how we know and if you really want to be fancy, you could do a little shading up under here just to make it look like it's tucked up. But that's kind of a fine tuning thing. You don't really have to do that if you don't want to. Okay, now, oops, let's do this one. As long as we're down here, we'll just let's shade a little bit around here. Maybe make this look around. I'm just going to shade a little on both sides, just a little bit, and I'll rub my finger there. And if it gets smeared out, if it's smeared around, you can always just go like that. There, and just pick it up again with your eraser. All right, now, if you have trouble going this way, you can always turn your paper around and it's the same motion. If it's easier to pull the pencil this way. You know, if you're right-handed, it's probably easier to shade like this. So you don't have to turn it upside down, but that's a little trick if you need to. I'll finish it right side up. But then if you're going to shade like that, you're going to have to push it going the other way. The nice thing about pencil is you can smear it like that. And so you don't want to have it look like a line, if possible. You don't want a stripe down the side. You don't want a stripe. You want a nice, subtle shading. If it looks too stripey, then you need to make your transition more gradual. Now for the top. This is the one that's going to be a little trickier because it's not just a stripe. It's kind of round. We have these long strokes. So just be patient. You don't have to do the whole thing at a time. You can kind of do it in stages like this. Nice long strokes. Just nice and patient. Remember to keep your pencil a little bit tipped to the side. It helps. And you can use your finger there. Okay, and then I'm going to tip my paper like that because I think it's easier to work like this. So don't ever be afraid to tip your paper when you're drawing. There's no rule that says you absolutely have to keep your paper up the right way up. Okay, feel free to shift your paper. And then if you want to be tricky and you want to make these look a little bit 3D, you can just go just on the underside, do tiniest little bit of shading like this. Just a little. If you don't want to, you don't have to, but that's just a little, little trim detail. It makes it look a little more real. Okay, now we're going to go next to, let's see, let's draw 
Let's draw the egg sac here. We're going to draw a little larva here. We're going to draw a little egg sac. Copepods come in male and female. Not all microscopic creatures have male and female. In fact, worms don't have male and female. They're both. They're called hermaphrodites, and they're kind of it's. They're he and she at the same time. But that's not true for copepods. They have male and female. And I want to show you, this is their little life cycle. So here's the grown-up copepods. There's the maybe the male and female. And they lay, the female lays eggs. The male fertilizes the eggs, and the female lays the eggs. And then when the eggs hatch, they turn out to the this little thing here. And I'll show you an up-close picture of this. It's called a nopleus. And this is what it looks like. Isn't that a goofy looking thing? Look at that. That's going to turn into a copepod. That's a copepod larva called a nopleus. And so the nopleus gets larger and larger and just like a an insect or a crab or something, when it grows it has to molt and shed its skin. You know, lots of animals, even lizards shed skin, snakes shed skins. Lots of animals shed their skin, so it has to shed its skin and molt as it grows larger. And every time it gets a little bigger, it looks a little more like an adult. And then one time after, this looks like about six molts, when it comes out this time, it looks a lot like an adult. And then it keeps molting and shedding its skin and getting a little bigger and a little bigger, and it just grows larger. And usually when it first comes out, it doesn't quite even have all its legs. It looks like a very simple copepod then it molts again and again and again and eventually turns into an adult. And it will be either a male or a female. And if it's a female, it'll lay eggs and the whole cycle will start again, round and round. Sometimes these eggs can last, like they'll, they'll go to the bottom of the pond. And sometimes if these don't make it through the winter, the eggs will make it through the winter. And this spring, the little tiny nopolises will hatch out and start growing. And this cycle can take anywhere from a week to a year. Depends on what kind of copepod. There's many kinds of copepods. So um, I don't know which one, this particular one here, I don't know which one we're drawing. But let's say it could maybe be a couple of weeks it could do, or a couple of months. It could complete that cycle. And copepods have to have a lot of babies because their job in life is to get eaten. Right? They are zooplankton. And their job is to get eaten by fish and tadpoles and things that are a little higher on the food web than they are. So let's draw an egg sac right here. The female keeps her eggs in a sac right here. It's going to be right below this, these two segments, right below at the bottom of your, your egg shape right here. Okay, you're going to draw kind of a thing that looks a shape. It doesn't have to be perfect, don't worry. But just something like this coming off, like kind of a balloon sticking off. And we saw this right here. There's This will be a female, right? And this will be her, that'll be her egg sac sticking off. So they don't always have egg sacs, but if you see an egg sac on a copepod, you can be sure it's a female. So that's about where it's going to go. And then we want to just put in lots of little round balls. They're about the size of a pea. And here's a little trick. You make the balls in the middle first, and then on the outside, look what you can do to really be artistic. When you get to the outside, these balls, you're not going to see the whole thing. You can kind of just go like this, round it off. And like on this side here, this ball, so you might only see the edge of it like that peeking out. So you draw the inside ones first, save the outside for after, and then when you run out of space, just put whoop, little half ones like that. See that peeking out like this? Like that. Okay, and then we can erase our guideline. I think I'll put another one here. And then it's up to you how much you want to do with the eggs. Now, you can, if you want to, take the time and you can shade a little bit. Right in the crack between the eggs there, let's say, 
it would be kind of dark. If you want to kind of darken in there where there's between the eggs. Make a little shady area and kind of smear it a little bit. You see how that's kind of looking a little bit 3D-ish? Kind of shade around the outside of them. But if that's too much, then you don't have to do that. You could even just go on the edge of them like this, just do a little bit. Let's say the light's coming from the top. You could just shade the bottom if you just want to kind of go like that a little bit on each of the eggs. Just go like that a little bit on the bottom. Just make a little, little bit of a shadow. And you can always go in and kind of smear it around. It's amazing how smearing your pencil lines makes it look all artistic. Okay. All right, so we're going to draw the larvae on the other side. So we won't draw the egg sacs. She would have two egg sacs probably, unless one dropped off. She might still only have one, if one already dropped off. But right here in this space, we're not going to bother drawing the other one because we're going to draw the larvae right in here, the nauplius. So we're going to draw another egg shape. So this egg is going to be actually about the size of a real egg, right in here. Don't make it too close. We're going to draw some arms off here. Remember what this thing is going to look like. It's going to look like an egg with some arms. So make sure you allow enough space here at the left to put those arms on. Okay, so something like this right in here. Just make it light. Remember, just a guideline here. There's our egg. And then we'll make it kind of flat on the bottom. So it's kind of like it just has that top headpiece. It's like it just has, it's just like it has this top thing here, and like it stops or something. Or like here, just like it has that and then it stops. So this will be flat. But it doesn't have any little segments yet, right? It's just plain. It does have a little eye spot already. And we'll color those in in just a minute. And then it's got, just do a little quick guideline, one, two, three, four, five, six. I'll zoom in here. So that's going to be where the arms go, or the feet, actually. Maybe these are going to eventually be the antennae at the top, I don't know. Okay, and we'll just look at it one more time. Okay, so see how they're gonna we're gonna come in here and make these a little bit thicker. Mainly what we have to do is say this would be I think like the stomach, the digestive system in here. And we can add texture in a, little, in a minute. So we're gonna just gonna make these little armies. Let's make them fatter. And then I can erase my little guidelines. Although we'll still see that through there. Because these things are transparent, they're see-through. So you can see their legs. These legs are probably actually like going underneath, but you can see them kind of sticking out underneath. So actually we can kind of leave that. Okay, and so at the end of here, these things have those spiky things coming out. Whoop, 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 like that. Whoop, whoop, whoop. These are fun to make. Then we'll give them some scruffly little intestine things here. Like I said, you, we're going to add texture. You can watercolor it in or add stuff. You're done. 
Okay, so let's get the red pencil now and give him a red eye. Eye spots in microscopic creatures are almost always red. Very often they're red. Um, the very simplest eye spots are red. And that, the color red, that helps them to find light. That's what the eye spot is for, to sense light. And the fact that they're red is actually helpful for them. Okay, so let's go up here and let's put the red in here too. Now, finishing it, it's kind of going to be up to you. You can leave it the way it is, or if you'd like to, you can use this picture or this picture. You can get these online, or, I'll, or um, I can give you a copy if you're doing this in my class. But if you're watching this online, you can just you can find this on the internet and print it out. Okay, so if you'd like to add a little bit of color, this one's kind of has a little bit of greenish. And here you can see, um, I'm not sure what these, this is supposed to be the digestive system. Um, we'll see they have it kind of shaded, but they have some extra green things in here. Don't worry too much about knowing what all these things are exactly. Um, but if you want to, you can find any picture at all, any picture you want to download. If you want to take some watercolors, you can either use your pencil to do that and add some texture. Or you can take a little watercolor and add that. So if you'd like to, if you use the watercolor, though, either way, pencil or watercolor, but especially it's dangerous when you do watercolor, you don't want to get it too heavy. You want to keep it very light. You want to make it look very transparent because these things are see-through, right? You don't want to paint real heavily. You could even make it a little darker in here for lines, but you want to use a light wash. Keep it light, okay? Keep it nice and light. Right, so it's up to you how to finish your copepod. It says right here, copepods found in ponds eat phytoplankton, which are mostly single cell algae. So if you would like to give your copepod something to eat, you can draw some little tiny, so the things it would eat would be about this big. Right, little small things, a lot of them would be green. There's a little desmid. Little tiny, mostly single cell. It might eat a little, maybe it would eat a diatom or something. And you can find some pictures online of little single cell algae. The diatoms are kind of more of a golden brown. Some of them. So if you'd like to feed your copepod, you can just give them some little algae to eat. It's funny that some of these little green algae, um, little single cells, they actually have flagella tails. They can move around. It's kind of weird to think of a little um, green, it's like a plant cell. They have chloroplasts in them, right? So these are the phytoplankton. Phyto means plant. So they act like plants. So they'd have be little cells with green chloroplasts making energy from the sun, just like plants do. But some of them actually can move around. So some of them some of them live in little lines like this, little colonies. I don't know whether the copepod can actually bite off a string of them or something. So that is what these eat. Now the ones in the ocean or the ones living on the sharks or something, they might eat something a little different. But our copepod, this one, is going to live in a pond. Okay, so we're going to give him some algae to eat. And you maybe want to put some down here, too, by the words. Give some examples of some single-cell algae. So if you type the word phytoplankton into Google image search, 
You'll see all kinds of little ideas for things to draw.